The California Bowl 2 on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you by Air 7 Sports, the shortest distance between you and the NFL. Beautiful white sand beaches of Santa Barbara. The wind is blowing just a little bit. Hasn't really affected this game much, except maybe in the heads of the field goal kickers. 10 to 7, Florida at the break. And we talked about the success all of these young men have had on the prep level, but perhaps no guy here has a more impressive resume than Demetrius Williams of De La Salle High School from the Bay Area out near San Francisco. 113 game winning streak. Demetrius Williams in four years of high school football lost exactly no games. Sometimes it puts pressure on people, but for the most part, it's not something that we drive our, our uh, success like on and everything. We kind of just, you know, go out there and try to play hard as we can every game. And then if we, if we lose, you know, and we play hard as we can, our coaches, they're not sitting there thriving on, you know, getting the streak or whatever. They're, they're more about winning as playing hard and everything like that. I mean, there's been games where we won and we didn't play hard and coach was mad at us, you know, so it's not really about the streak, I, don't, I really don't think. All the guys at De La Salle and Bob Latticer, their head coach, they all downplay that streak. They talk about academics before they talk about football. Demetrius Williams will be going to Oregon. He had 10 touchdowns during his senior year. They really spread things around at De La Salle, but he had three of those touchdowns in a win over Modern Day. Second team All-State, also played quarterback along with wide receiver for the Spartans of De La Salle. Jim, I'll tell you how good Demetrius Williams is. Remember De La Salle, the first year we covered them, they were a run offense. Well, with Demetrius Williams and Matt Gutierrez, the quarterback, they completely changed the entire offense to become a, strictly a pass offense. And that kid is very special. Going on to Oregon, expect big things from him. And we'll get a chance to see De La Salle this year, at least we're hoping to, as they'll take on Long Beach Poly in week five. And you don't even have to talk about that game. All you have to say is De La Salle and Poly. The number one and two ranked teams in the nation almost for the last three years. They are unbelievable. Two great programs, and that is going to be a shootout. De La Salle, the defending national champions, of course, mythical at the high school level, but I don't think anybody really disputed it. California, a, a big answer, JJ. That touchdown at the end of the half, I think, was huge for them. Yeah, well, especially going into the half to get the momentum shifted back towards them. It allows them to go into the half, regroup. But most importantly, it allows them to reevaluate what needs to be done. I think that the one thing the coaches will recognize is they have to get Tyler and Bell going. That last drive did wonders for him, and hopefully will do wonders for this team. Sean Taylor and Gamble are back. First Gamble, it's Taylor at the six-yard line. Both of these guys are explosive and dangerous. It's Sean Taylor. Taylor. Sean Taylor. Out of bounds just before the 40-yard line. Both of those guys are very scary. And just reading their stats and then coming out to practice and watching them run around. I don't know, I might chip it. <laughs> yeah, Sean Taylor going to Miami. Here's McPherson's first half numbers, 9 of 12, 152, and both a, a touchdown and Dominic Robinson picked him in the end zone to end the drive. Yeah, the most important, the most impressive part of his statistics, Jim, 9 of 12. So that just goes to show he's making the right decision, he's making the right read. He has thrown, it, has thrown an interception. But that was only because of a great play by Dominic Robinson. Yeah, it wasn't a, a bad throw. Probably his worst throw in the first half was the touchdown to Crow Thorpe because it got tipped by a defender before it went into his receiver's hands. From the shotgun. From the shotgun to start the second half. Throw it out in the flat. Jones. Jones turns that corner well. California a little lazy to get there. Matt Ware came up, dropped the shoulder. Jones went right past him to the 50. Larry Jones has a low center of gravity and tremendous quickness around the edge. This is just a quick screen pass, and this is just designed to take advantage of that 3D coverage. Remember, there's nobody in the flat, and so when you get a runner like Jones out in the open field, he's able to make plays like this. Matt Ware had to come up from his safety position. He's the first person to even come in contact with Jones, but not after a big play. Here's McPherson just shifting his way down to about the 43-yard line. He never really committed to the run until he crossed the line of screen. It looked like he could pull it back at any time. Well, Adrian McPherson, he is really going to be the prototype of quarterback in the future. Quarterback that is agile, able to run half low. I mean, you, know, you really have to adjust your defensive scheme when you face a quarterback like this. You know, no longer can your pass rushers just rush the quarterback. They have to rush within lane to make your job for your offensive line is so much easier to pass on. Yeah, it's obvious the game has changed even at this level that you want a quarterback who's maneuverable, who's athletic, you can do things. Here's Jones again. Well, 
they keep getting Jones out on that quarter. Jones from Leon High School, his head coach, of course, is the coach of Florida, so they know the system, they know the play. Jim Sauls, coach to the guy he knows, Jones out of the corner. The thing about Jones, JJ, he gets the ball and he just turns that corner, he squares it up, goes right up field. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's moving that fast, but you can see he just leaves defenders behind, and in that low center of gravity, he goes down it punishes defensive backs in the secondary, so they have found a weakness in the California defense, a weak side swing pass, so we'll see if California's making any adjustments to stop that. Larry Jones, 19 yards, moves it down to the California 24-yard line. So they take the run. Pearson rolls, buffs the side. Oh, the end zone touchdown! It's Pollock! Jaworski Pollock was all alone. And remember, those two guys were high school teammates at Southeast High in Bradenton. And Florida comes out and just drives down the field and stuffs it in the end zone, JJ. Now, Jim, we saw Matt Leiner make a touch pass when it was appropriate. And here's McPherson doing the same thing. Half roll. Now, McPherson had a choice to run, throw the ball in the flat, but no, he shows patience, waits for Pollock to uncover. Great patience by the quarterback and trust in his receivers, and he laid that ball right on the money. Easy catch and throw. Those two hooked up this year for 20 touchdowns. The Pollock had 20 touchdowns, so they are very, very familiar territory with another touchdown score and a quick strike from the Florida team. Ryan Rankin with an extra point can once again make it a 10-point lead for Florida. And it's through. So it's 17 to 7. Jaworski Pollock, they call him Jaws. Just ran down and curled to the outside. California was late to react. McPherson with a touch pass. He can throw it 60 yards, but he threw that one soft for the score. They call him Jaws. Jaworski Pollock. The 24-yard touchdown reception from A.D. McPherson puts Florida back up on top of California. 17 to 7. Second annual California Bowl. Last year we were at the Rose Bowl. This year up in Santa Barbara. Look at that. 64 yards in just four plays. They went 14 yards, 7 yards, 19 yards, and 24 yards. Pretty good opening drive in the second half, JJ. Yeah, just incredible. The halftime adjustments made by the coaches. Found a couple weaknesses in the California defense, took advantage of them, and then when it came time to get the bread and butter, it was McPherson to pull it. Matt Clark takes a knee in the end zone. Let's go down. On the sideline, Mike Lamb. And I'm here with Jaworski Pollock, who scored that touchdown. And man, what did the coach say to you at halftime? Well, they just told us to come out, you know, play like it's the game just started all over. 0-0, zero, zero. so we came out, got fired up, and we had to go. Talk to me about the touchdown play. Well, um, we gave, I gave him a little post corner, and I uh, got him to turn his hip, and I bent, turned it back out to the outside, and I got him. Turn the hips, you get him every time, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good luck with the rest of the game. Back up to you, Jim. Obviously, standing next to Mike Lamb, anybody looks small, but Jaws is only 5'8", 165. Still, he had 20 touchdowns for Southeast High School. The other end of A.D. McPherson's throws. Matt Leinert is back in at quarterback for California. Leinert looks downfield, has to go underneath, and I don't know if he ever made up his mind. He had two guys on the left side. Yeah, bad decision by Matt Leinert right there. He showed a little bit of indecision. He was trying to go downfield to Demetrius Williams, and when that was covered, he wanted to throw the dump off pass. He came a little upset with himself on that throw. See his numbers in the first half, 5 of 11. Second down and 10 for California, and I think they're right back in the same position they were at the end of the first half, J.J., when they were down 10 to nothing. They had to score. They had to answer. Right back there again after Florida's opening touchdown here in the third quarter. Got to get something. Maybe not points, but you got to move this football. And out with Dorsey. Dorsey. After the 35-yard line. And Jim, I tell you, from a coaching perspective, it's really tough to coach this game because you know you have great skill players at the skill position, so you, the tendency is to go out and throw the ball, but really, you can make this into a smash-mouth game with that huge offensive line up front. They've been able to run the ball and been effective on the ground. See a nice run to the outside, able to pick up valuable yardage, and the linebackers for the Florida team are really soft in coverage because the California's throwing the ball so much, so those run plays off tackle should be there. Dominic Dorsey now, three carries for 25 yards. He's the guy who's going to UNLV to play for J.J.'s dad and John Robinson. There's Dorsey again. Tripped over his quarterback's foot and managed to keep his balance and fall forward for a yard. 
Mike down, Lamb is the on the sideline, and, and, and Mike, at this point in the game, I think the most important thing for California is to control that offensive line. Well, you look at the offensive line, and I think California's not panicking. They're still pounding away. You saw a zone play the time before. This time you see a little counterplay. Those are plays that you use when you want to try to wear down the defense. Second down and eight now for California. Liner goes from the shotgun. Modern day a traditional running team, but over the last couple of years has thrown the ball much, much more. And you can see that that's, uh, that's the result. Touch pass, Matt Leinert and Charles Ely. Ely, a little turnout. Mike, one of the things that you talked with the coaches about during this week was pass protection. And that these guys at this level may not have those skills. Well, the pass protection was an issue, and they thought they were going to have to roll everybody because the way the California defensive line was beaten up on the California offensive line in practice this week. But to this point, they've done okay, but they've had to make an adjustment. First they've got to double-team California those two inside tackles. Those are the guys who are getting the pressure. It's a first down at the 48-yard line of California. Liner turns and hands to Dorsey. Now they seem to have Florida a little bit off balance and will open and close quickly, but a pretty good game. Mike, talk to me because you played offensive line for USC. Talk to me about the teamwork, the game within the game, those five guys up front, the schemes, the communication, and the, and the strategy with the guys in the trench. Well, there's a lot of communication, but I mean, more than anything else, you want them to wear somebody down, and especially when you've got the running backs that California's got, not the most physical guys. You want to have somebody suck and win on the defensive line so he can't chase down the likes of a Tyler Ebel so that they can't get off and tee off on Matt Liner, and that's the key to winning this game. Liner again from shotgun. Looks to his right side, throws near the sideline. Is it Williams? Demetrius Williams, the Florida coaches are saying he was out of bounds. The officials are conferring. And look at the lobbying by the Florida coaches. Yeah, there's a touch pass by Liner to Demetrius Williams. Williams showing great awareness on the side. I knows where he's at, trying to keep his feet in. He's definitely in bounds. The right foot got down towards the high school football. One foot, Big Elko and Mike. You know, I have a question about the offensive line also. Are they, as a, at this point of the game, is the California offensive line getting the best of the Florida defensive line, or is it vice versa? No, I think Florida's still the dominant of the two, but they're starting to wear down. They're starting to get a little bit tired, and we'll see how it happens in the fourth quarter for them. Yeah, Jim, you know the most is give a chance to see Leiter back to pass another throw. Route on the money to Smith, Ryan Smith from St. Joseph's. Is pretty solid today, running some good routes. He's got good size. Goes about 6'1", a buck 80. Top of your screen, the white helmet. Yeah, just a little combo route. You see the out, clears the underneath coverage, and then the curl right behind it, and that line is right on the money. 15 yards. California is answering back, trying to keep themselves in this football game. Down to the 18-yard line, and again, it's a first down. And off Dominic Dorsey. Dominic Dorsey off blocks downfield to about the 11-yard line. Oh, well, we're talking about the offensive line with Mike Lamb because Mike Lamb, of course, played offensive line in college for USC. Big number, I believe it was 61, wasn't it, Mike? You'll see him here on the right side of your screen against UCLA. Just pancaking a gunny little throw. Do you remember that one? But if you Great start to block, think, Lamb. think about the athleticism, watch Big 61 here, cut across. Oh! Now, not one of your big highlights, but you were behind the play, so it didn't matter, Mike. The first play is the one I like to remember. <laughs> I'm amazed we found highlights of Lamb. <laughs> Did they have video back then? It's on Kinescope. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, talk about your years at USC, because I'm tired of hearing J.J. talk about his years. You were there at 79 to about 83. Yeah, but and back when men were men. <laughs> Just the free J.J. era. <laughs> Defend yourself, J.J. Oh, well, you know, well, rings, Lamb, rings. You got to, you know, Pac-10 championships and all that for SC. It's a matter of how many rings you got sometimes, buddy. It, it is. It's all about the ring, JJ. Right. Here's what it's about, as I understand, with USC football. What were your records against UCLA and Notre Dame? Well, you know, Jim, I, at this point... <laughs> I'm sorry, JJ, did you give me a number? Yeah, you know, at this point, is, I think it was undefeated for SC. You know, I can't really remember that far back, but we had a great run against UCLA. <laughs> John Jackson and Mike Lamb. Liner rolls. Liner, a soft pass again. Corner of the end zone. He's got his man. It's Ely. Touchdown. Yeah, 
And Charles Ely has been killing Florida today. He and Smith have been the two dangerous wideouts for California. And Leonard, again, a nice, soft timing pass. And Jim, you saw the post corner route work for Florida where California comes back with the same route. You see Ely bend him inside, get the DB to turn his hips, and then that ball thrown right in the corner of the end zone by Matt Leinart, and that's two great touch passes by two great quarterbacks. Both of them took the same approach to throw the same route. There's no sense to zip that ball in, you just throw it to an area and let your receivers go get it. That time, Matt Leinart right on the money. Extra point by Brian New, and just like that, California comes back. It's 17 to 14 now. Every time Florida pulls away, California answers. Now Charles Ely, four catches, 56 yards. And this one for a touchdown from Matt Leiner. California back within three. Florida and California. Here at beautiful Harder Stadium. Denver, John California, Mack, he wears the St. Bonaventure Barbara. cap. That's his job most of the year. The past week, he's been the California head coach here in Santa Barbara for California Bowl two. Right now, he finds his California All-Stars down three with 12 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. David Corral. California quarterback, caught from behind and hammered. He tried to wait, he tried to wait. Probably ran out of time. Jim, Chauncey Davis is gonna explode around the corner after he beats his blocker. Now he's gonna be coming from your left side of the screen. So watch Crowley half rolling and just watch a blur. Now this blur is 6'3", 235, and he just corrals, corrals, spikes him into the ground. That is an incredible play by Chauncey Davis. And that's a block that Tyler Ebel should have come back and made. He was on the wrong side of the quarterback on the rollout and didn't come back to help him out. Hey, wait a minute, Lamb. You got to blame the running back? How about the lineman? <laughs> He's never going to blame a lineman. <laughs> that ball is taken on a play up front by Sean Taylor. Oh, that could have been very dangerous. Brian New got that ball out quick. He's seen all the blocks. He got rid of it in a hurry. Sean Taylor took it like a second baseman. A line drive. Yeah, remember now, Jim, both kickers are doubling as both the kicker and the punter. So remember in high school, you have a, sometimes a punter and a kicker. For this all-star game, you have to do double duty. So Brian knew a little bit out of his element. He's mainly a place kicker, but he has a step back and punt. The result, a short punt. You see that Newt gets rid of it quickly, and he's kicking with the wind. Chuck Taylor just reaches up. He wasn't expecting it. He just turned around. There it was. He's a great athlete. He reacted. Sean Taylor going to Miami. Went to Gulliver High School in Miami. Dusty Almond is back in at quarterback for Florida as both teams continue to shuffle with the quarterbacks in and out. Passing yards through three quarters. Florida now with a big advantage, 259 to 187. Almond with 32 of those yards. He wants some yards as a quarterback for Florida. Just throw it to Crow Thorpe. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. He has produced a huge chunk of those passing yards for Florida. Big catch in the first half and a big run after catch here in the second. Second down and short now. Ahmed takes the high snap. Hands it off to Gilliam. Gilliam first down. Spun down to the 36 yard line. And now you can feel the balance in this game because early on guys were just backpedaling and expecting the throw. But now both teams have gone to the run a little bit. So you got to play honest. Yeah, and that's exactly what it will do, Jim. It will keep the linebackers. Remember, that's the key to stopping the pass is your linebacker in the 4-3 defense have to get in, have to get into pass coverage because these teams are both the single back four receivers. And when you, you run the ball, it forces them to inch up to the line of scrimmage and opens up all the other things you want to do in the passing game. So there's a lot of running lane with the linebackers playing deep off the ball trying to get into pass coverage. Mike Gilliam, five carries, 26 yards now for Florida. Almond rolls, good protection. He has got all day, just needs somebody to throw it to. California with blanket coverage, and that ball is knocked down. Uh, that's a good play by California. Justin Finnessy is the guy who knocked it to the turf, but everybody scattered, smothered, and covered. They were all over. Yeah, once again, a coverage sack and a great job by the secondary for the California defense. Play action fake. They're going to fake to Gilliam after a nice run early to the play before. And so now you think the things are going to open up downfield with the California defense very aware of what's going on, able to get all over the receivers, as you see. And Almond had no place to throw the ball. He throws it right into the chest of one of the defenders. And Jimmy, just to validate JJ's point, the secondary is doing a great job. They're pressing and putting eight in the box. So there's a lot of pressure on the corners. And, and Florida's still having a hard time throwing the football down the field. Mike, is there a weakness? Where would you go? You gotta try to run against that eight. 
And he's going to throw it to the corner. They're going for Thorpe. And Thorpe couldn't get to it. Good coverage. Yeah, the cornerback for the California defense learning a lesson on the speed of Thorpe that time playing off in coverage. JJ, look at these two athletes. You got Crow Thorpe and you got Dominic Robinson. Yeah, and stride for stride. Right, and look at the angle that Dominic Robinson took. Anytime you're a defensive back, you want to close the angle and push into the receiver. Dominic did that time, kept himself in between the receiver and the ball. Nice defensive play. And that's an important thing, and a lot of young guys don't understand that about angles as a as a defensive back, as a cornerback, as a safety, you, you want to stay between your man and the ball. Right, and anytime you're at the corner, you recognize that the receiver is going deep or going up for a pass. You want to take the angle to cut him off and get in between that pass. Third down and ten. They set up the screen. It's Jones. Larry Jones. Plenty of space. Jones to the 15-yard line. First down, Florida. A great call and well done by Dusty Allman, the quarterback. Really disguised it. Yeah, Jim, we've seen a couple of screen plays today that have been so effective, and I think it's because of the aggression of each defense. This time California half roll to the right and they come back to the left. This screenplay is wide open. You see the hogs up front leading the way. And that is always going to be open, especially in a high school all-star game, because the lack of discipline on the backside by the linebacker court. Matt Hines, one of those big guys running up front. Matt Hines from North Florida Christian in Tallahassee four-time state champion during his time on campus. And I think also a first-team All-State selection. Take the football. There's Matt Hines. Down to the... You know where he's going, JJ? That's right. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. The guys who stand out, I look down to see what school they're going to, and for the half the time, it's Florida State. No wonder they're so good. Oh, it's just not fair. Second down and eight now from the 14-yard line. They take the run again. Almond, straight on some man, Dusty Almond. The quarterback a little attitude, laid across the middle, just getting rid of that football. And Dusty Almond made about three really good plays, and it goes as an incompleted pass. How about the straight arm? Yeah, Jim, Dusty Almond goes 6'2", 190, and he put a straight arm on Josh Martin like a running back. You watch Almond the half roll, he's looking down the field, but to buy himself time, just stiff arm. <laughs> Sit down, let me Third find my receiver. He eludes another defender and throws that ball harmlessly for an incompletion. But you just get a chance to see, you know, the athletic ability of the players that are on the field today. Just unbelievable. You just can't appreciate it enough. The players are making against other great athletes. Dusty Allman, who's going to go to Southern Mississippi. I mentioned before, Brett Favre's alma mater. And that looked like a far play. That's the quarterback with attitude. Get off me. I'm not done with this play yet. Two receivers to the right, and three to the right, actually, and one to the left. And now they'll send four guys on the right side of this attack. And the ball was intended on the left side for Charles Frederick. And Frederick slipped as he made his cut and threw the timing off. It's all they had no chance. Jimmy, the Florida coaches have been talking in their huddle about the fact that they feel the slant is there. They feel the safeties are cheating over, trying to bracket the receivers on the other side, and they're going to try to do that. But the problem is, when you get down inside the 10-yard line, you can change your defense a little bit in these all-star games. So what you've been doing all game long might not work down in the red zone. Hey, Mike, uh, here's another field goal by Ryan Rankin. Watch those guys up front. Are they sealed? Even money. <laughs> it's a 31-yard field goal. He got this one off. It goes just outside the upright. And I think Rankin might maybe a little bit uh, preoccupied with just getting that ball off the tee. So they miss again, and it remains a three-point game. 8-13 to play. And I'm with Ryan Rock. You remember him from UCLA. And Ryan... Uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on with you after football. You've got a, a, an organization that you put together that I'm pretty amazed with. Uh, yes, it's the, uh, it's the CAC. What it stands for is the Collegiate Athletes Coalition, and it's basically a method. What we're trying to do is we're trying to organize all the Division I football and basketball players to create a means to effectively voice our concerns. Uh, eventually, we'll be able to uh, influence NCAA legislation. What are a couple of those concerns? Um, one, uh, increased health coverage. Uh, uh, increase in the $10,000 uh, stipend for if a player should die on the field. Uh, we think their family should receive more than $10,000. And also increase monthly stipends. 
And you've aligned yourself with a union, and some people raise some eyebrows. Who are you aligned with? Uh, United Steelworkers Union has been backing us in uh, all the way in everything we've done, and we'd like to thank them for that. Well, Ryan, good luck in your efforts. Jimmy, back up to you. Yeah, it's, it's been interesting, and, and Ryan and his organization have been getting a lot of press, JJ. And, and after this play, I'm going to ask you, because you played college football, what your impressions are. California going to keep it on the ground. What do you think? Is this all a good idea? Well, you know, me being an ex-football player, of course, I'm going to be biased, but I definitely think it is. I think what happens a lot of times with the illegal recruiting and all the things that go on in college football is the football players cannot afford to have the normal means uh, due to the rules and stipulations. Now, there has to be strict rules around college football, but I think that the things that Ryan is trying to do and his program is trying to do will make it fair and equitable for the players without being too much over the edge. Mike Lamb, the NCAA has a lot of restrictions on college athletes. Should those be relaxed? Now, we lost Mike again for a second. Mike's doing research down the sideline. And they're going to throw it. Ely throws this football, and it was intercepted. Florida says they have it. Charles Sharon from Blotka going to Bowling Green. Laying on his back with that football on his chest. Intercepted. Wow, what a great interception by Sharon. You see the celebration. Now they go with a, a handoff and then a pass, trying to go to Demetrius Williams. And Sharon playing the free safety spot in the middle of the field, able to come over and make that play, Jim. Now, when you got to run a handoff and a pass, you have to have your running game working effectively. Well, California has not done that as of late. So they didn't get anybody from the Florida defense to bite on the play fake. Thus, Sharon in perfect position to make that interception. Florida in great field position. Yeah, that was a big opportunity for California because they had just come up with the stop. Reagan missed the field goal. California was down by three. They had the football. They give it right back. And now Florida. And Florida puts the ball in the end zone. California's in a deep hole. There's only seven and a half minutes to play. Dusty Almond still at quarterback. He looked good on that last drive. Almond. Scoops to his left. Dropped the football. Picked it up. Just a little bounce pass to himself. <laughs> Managed to keep going forward. Now that'll get your heart going, huh? <laughs> yeah, well. Because he's running with his face down, and he knows that somebody's coming that's angry. Well, this is a hot day, and I'm sure that there's a lot of perspiration on the hands of Almond. So when he comes to the outside, the ball just slips out of his hands, but he's able to regroup, pick it up, and pick up positive yardage. He's pick up about six yards. So um, very fortunate to get that one back. They can ill afford a turnover at this point. Spencer Havner, the linebacker from Nevada Union out in Grass Valley. He was the guy coming. And a step earlier, he could have taken his head off. You know, Jim, in the offensive game plan for Florida doesn't change irregardless of the quarterback. Now, you know McPherson, a great athlete, able to run. But even with Allman in there, they're still half rolling, still getting him into the open field to make play. Two receivers to the left. They keep killing him in to block. Allman down the middle. Where was there? Where came over to close? And also good coverage by Randy Landingham. Yeah, Landingham in great position now. He's getting ready to go to Nebraska in the fall, so Landingham able to stay right on the heels of the receiver and close at the right point. The Almond's going to throw down the middle. Now that ball has to have some higher trajectory, let the receiver run under it. It's supposed to throw a line drive in there, and allows Landingham to come under the receiver and make that foot. You're going to throw that ball deep down the middle, Jim. you got to put some air on it and let the receiver go get it. Landingham was great coverage, Jim, and he actually had a better shot at it than Ware did. Dusty Almond now for Florida is 3 of 10 for 52 yards. So 50 yards. Here comes backside pressure. They wanted it to come. There's Larry Jones. Oh, spins out of a tackle by Jabril Ramos. He left Ramos close. <laughs> Boy, if you can't appreciate what's happening on this field today, you just don't know football. That was a phenomenal move, and he did leave Raymond a great tackler to make numerous plays today, just diving at the ground. Half rolled in the backside screen again, the one that was so effective on the last drive. See, ya. look at the spin move. Oh, that's a great move. Larry Jones, deceptive. Ryan Not only was loose, but his speed as well for Leon High in Tallahassee. Didn't get the first down, so Florida will have to kick it away. Back deep for California. And back deep for California is Dominic Robinson. And I'll tell you, he looks like Deion. He's wearing, wearing the number. JJ's got the shirt out. And this punt goes straight up in the air, and there are flags. This ball lands at the California 40-yard line. I don't know if anybody's outside. 
Fourth down and nine, so an offsides in California would give a first down. It's procedure against Florida, so they're going to have to kick it again, but California probably gets the line and take it at the 40, yeah? Right, Nick, because this is going to net out to about a six-yard punt. So, you know, we talked about it before, one kicker on the team, and for Florida, Rankin is mainly a field goal kicker, not used to punting a lot, so he hits one off the side of his foot, and he'll give California a break and give him the ball in decent field position. Coming up on Tuesday, July 10th, don't forget about the 2001 Major League Baseball All-Star Game from Safeco Field in Seattle. It's right here on Fox. It's the Midsummer Classic. Pedro, Barry, they all go head-to-head -head Tuesday, July 10th. Don't you miss it. Midsummer Classic, the All-Star Game on Fox. Now it's football today here at Santa Barbara. David Corral for California. They need a score. Across the middle and behind his receiver. Trying to go to Matt Clark. Sliding at midfield and a penalty flag back at the 29 yard line of California. And this is going to be back in the area where Corral threw the ball, so we might have a dead ball roughing the passer penalty against Florida. So the major penalties continue to hurt this Florida All Star team. Right, and the penalties of Florida are getting personal fouls and the late hits here. They're major penalties and they're more mental than they are physical. I remember, Jim, it's high school kids, and they're trying to come out and make a big impression and make big hits, and, of course, the rivalry and all that stuff. So you're going to have some of that, but at this point of the game for Florida, it is imperative that they do not commit these type of penalties. I know the coaching staff for Florida is trying to calm their team down. They have the lead. They just need to protect it. Now, now it moves it out across midfield to the 46-yard line of Florida. David Corral under center for California. That's a big, big penalty. At the 46 of Florida. Four receivers. And Tyler Ebell. Tyler Ebell on the... Yeah, I'll tell you, Ebell went about a yard and a half when he made three moves. Yeah, and the thing is, is you know, you want to get the running game started, but somebody has the block. That time the entire Florida front seven came through. No place for Ebell to go. Great pursuit by that Florida front seven. Jim talking to the Florida coach before the game. They were concerned because they only have seven linemen on this trip. They wish they would have had some more linemen because they were worried about fatigue getting into the fourth quarter with the heat, etc. But this team has not slowed down one bit. This front seven and this defensive line is playing extremely well. California showing some patience right now. Second down and ten. Just over five minutes to play and Florida leads 17-14. David Corral, good pocket protection. Corral in the flat. Now Toledo was out there and I'm not sure he might have been throwing it to a number of different guys. Let's go to Mike Lamb on the sideline. Well, you look at the... Well, now that I'm thinking about it, since it's pick on Lyman Day, I'm going to give one of Lyman some love. And uh, Robert Bergman, number 70 out of Bakersfield High School, headed for the University of Miami. He's got some unreal numbers. Last year, he had no sacks, no hurries on the quarterback, 57 pancakes. And on the baseball team, he was a pitcher. He has a 91 mile per hour fastball. And on top of that, 3.4 GPA. Now, that's offensive lineman play. <laughs> that's one I can appreciate, Mike. Ryan Jeff Smith. Ryan Smith, excuse me. Did he catch it? No. He's going to say incomplete. Picked up by number 11 there. The ball low. They'll bring up a fourth down. And now both defenses are doing their jobs. Crowd a little frustrated as he heads to the California sideline. Good opportunity for California. They had a, a first down at the 46-yard line, unable to move it at all. Yeah, they have corralled corral, so to speak, Jim, and they have really limited the things he has been able to do. Remember, they're running a standard 3D cover, so there are openings, but... They're going to fake it. J.J. Jabril Ramos going to throw this ball across the middle. Intercepted. So Florida, good read and react. We're not fooled by it. And California comes up empty. They're 0 for 7 on third down, and now 0 for 1 on fourth down. Actually, they scored a touchdown on fourth down, so let's get 1 for 2. Well, they're going to go direct snap to the up man, and then he's going to try to, Ramos going to try to throw the pass. Now you see he's going, rolling to his right. He has to throw back across his body. Never a good idea, even for a quarterback to do, much less a talented, strong safety. So the interception 
turns the ball over and gives Florida the ball in decent field position. Charles Sharon, his second interception of the game, and, and Ramo, a great athlete, rolled to his right. I don't even know who he's trying to throw to. There are a couple of linemen down the middle. And off, it's Jones. Jones, a big gain out to midfield. That's Marcus Jones. Looks like college football at Rutgers. Yeah, there's a ton of Jones on the field. 24 touchdowns for Jones during his regular season. St. Augustine High School, 16 yards on that carry. He exploded around the corner. Now, you got to talk about Jones, how effective he was in high school. Jimmy averaged nine yards a carry. Nine yards a carry. How do you go the season average nine yards a carry? That was the first down every time he touches the ball. First down now for Florida, right at the stripe at midfield. Trying to take some time off the clock, 434. California won this football game last year, the first time they got together, 22 to 11. And since then, even though these guys, admittedly, on either side, didn't play in that game, because it's all seniors. But the Florida guys seem very concerned with that. We were at camp, we were talking to the coaches. I said, do you mention it? Is it a rivalry yet? It's only the second year. And he said, you know, these guys know that a team from Florida came out and got beat last year, got beat pretty badly. He said, I don't have to talk about it. It's all they're talking about. Yeah, well, it's definitely pride, Jim. And, you know, at high school, at the high school level, at any level, anytime you're in comparison with another group, in this case, high school in California versus high school in Florida, there's a lot of pride at stake. You're representing a lot of people from your hometown. So these team, the Florida team really came out with a lot of focus this week. They practiced that way, and right now they're playing that way. Moses and Pollock are the wideouts. That would be Moses' side. Instead, they went to Gamble, who's dragging across the middle, Chris Gamble. Chris Gamble. Gamble play at Ohio State. And now Jim, things will really open up for the Florida offense. You have, if you're the California defense, you have a ton of problems. First of all, you have McPherson back at the quarterback position. He poses a triple threat. Then you also have to worry about them running the clock out and running the ball. So now you're cheating up the line of scrimmage. And as soon as you do that, an accurate passer like McPherson, who's been for 63% during his high school senior year, will pick you apart all the time, especially if you're overplaying the run. And, and I, I remember the thing the coaches told us about McPherson, we were talking about his, his arm strength and his speed. They said, hey, his decision making is, is what sets him apart. This is a smart young man, and he has to be right now for Florida to protect this lead. Downfield and intercepted. Dominic Robinson went up and got it. Dominic Robinson back to the 25-yard line. So we talk about not making a mistake, and he makes one. That's right. As soon as he might have jinxed him, but it goes to prime time. You see prime time able to come up with that pick. Always in the right position. You see the towel, the celebration, the 21 on his back. This time McPherson throws it. You see he didn't get it all on that ball, Jimmy. Under threw that ball. Might not have even seen Dominic Robinson sitting there. But anyway, he's on his block. Comes up with his second interception. He's having a phenomenal game. In the fall, it appears that where chance to see the pressure put on McPherson. He after he let go of that ball. No love lost. Laid out by Michael Craven. Craven's going to Stanford. So here comes California again with 321. They're down by three. Tyler Ebell in the backfield behind Matt Leiner. Quick throw out the flat. Ely. Ely's had probably the best day of any of the California receivers, but he goes nowhere on that one. Right back to the line of scrimmage at 25. Clock running. 308, 307. Dominic Robinson, I guess if you're A.D. McPherson, the one good thing you will take out of this game, as well as he's played, he's thrown two interceptions to Dominic Robinson. The good news, they'll both be at Florida State next year, so he will not have to worry about Dominic Robinson anymore. Just in practice. <laughs> Just in practice. 251 remaining in the football game. Ely, 56 yards, five catches and a touchdown. Leiner, he glanced at Ely right before the snap. Now he ignores him and goes to the other side. Trying to go to Demetrius Williams from Dale LaSalle. Good coverage. Warren Brown, Belglade High School. Glade Central High School in Belglade. Williams, the That was great coverage and great closing speed by Brown. Watch Leiner is going to throw this ball, but the coverage is there. The comeback route to the outside, that is played beautifully. You cannot play the coverage any better than that, Jim. Get a hand in there, stay off the receiver, so there's no question of pass interference. Great play by Brown. That ball's got to get there a little quicker. Leiner's got to, got to put a little mustard on that one. That was one of the situations where he went, he's been throwing touch passes all day, and that was one situation where he could have put something extra on. Ebell's still in the backfield. 
They're not going to sneak him out. Penalty flag. This one may come back. Leinert on the run. Leinert still on his feet. And he's going to lose some yards. It's going to be fourth down or Florida is going to push California back. This has got to be against one of the interior linemen. Florida coaches are all saying decline. decline. It's a hold against California. They should decline it. Yeah, they're saying we don't want it. We don't need it. Because they sacked him anyway for a couple of yard loss. It'll be fourth down about 12. So let's get ahead of ourselves here, JJ, as they sort this one out. 225, and now effectively it's fourth down for California. Do you go now or do you kick it away and maybe get it back defensively? Well, I think if you're California, this is a fourth and long situation. If you don't pick up 13 yards in this play, you will not get another chance. So I think the wise thing to do is kick it here. It looks like they'll make that decision. Kick it here. You have three timeouts. Use those three timeouts. Try to get the ball back. Yeah, you can pick up a lot of field right here, and if you make if you make a mistake and you, and you don't pick up the first down, well then Florida's sitting on your 20-yard line. Right, so the key is a good punt and coverage, and it will not be easy because Florida will put back Sean Taylor, who in his senior year had three interceptions returned for touchdowns, three punts returned for touchdowns, and one kickoff returned for touchdowns. 22 rush TDs, so he is definitely a threat. Sean Taylor averaged about 40 yards of return, but he slips after two yards and goes down all by himself. He wanted more, but Florida doesn't need that. All they need to do is hold on to the football and run that clock as they try to even the series at 1-1. The Southern California Sports Report. the nightly newscast you've been waiting for. This is the real deal. 30 minutes every night dedicated to scores, highlights, and interviews from your hometown teams. We told you it was going to be good. Your teams, your town, your show. The Southern California Sports Report, nightly at 10 on Fox Sports Net. The California Bowl 2 on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you by Air 7 Sports, the shortest distance between you and the NFL. Sights and sounds from Santa Barbara's famous State Street. Uh, you can just walk up and down that all day long. But today, these guys keeping their minds on high school football. The California Bowl 2. Last year, California wanted Florida look at a party on the West Coast. to make sure that they are recognizing on the map. You guys are making a statement today. Been a good time. Gilliam. Gilliam going into that had six rushes for 28 yards on the day. It, you know, it gives us a chance, JJ, to thank the coaches, the staffs from both Florida and California. So accommodating. We went to practices. We spent time. Anything we asked, we wanted to sit down with some of these young men, talk with these coaches. John Mack was totally accommodating. Who do you need? What do you want? Here's what I'm going to try to do. I'd like to know what he's going to try to do right now, and so with the Florida coaches. What would you do if you're California, JJ? You need the football back. Well, California, you obviously have to come with some big stops, so you're going to have to have your defensive front seven cheat up to the line of scrimmage, take some chances. But we'll see right here. Florida goes for the throat. This is the play that you'd go for. It's second and long. This is the play, a play-action fake, a pass into the flat could just end this game for Florida. They need one first down, and that should seal it. Would you... Would you throw it deep? Would you have McPherson do that pump fake and throw to Thorpe? Well, I think if I'm McPherson, you know, the thing is you have to use him. You go with the play action and half roll him, then that way he has the choices. Now, he makes great decisions, so you'll be able to get him in the open field. He'll have the option whether to run or pass. But I would not throw the ball deep. I'd go maybe flood the zone, a double out to the side, maybe out the corner route. But in any case, I'd get McPherson to the outside, using that athletic ability to pick up something positive. Most importantly, keep the clock running. And, and that's a great point, JJ, because he can roll out and he can make the call on the fly if they're covered deep and he just tucks it away and he picks up what he can and it is in bounds. If they cheat up on him, he flips the ball over like we've seen him do already today to Thorpe for a big gainer. So you leave it in his hands. Smart young man with a bright future in front of him at Florida State. A.D. McPherson. California was there as Bernard Fano got through first. Slow him up. And Florida content to try to get California to burn their timeouts, not take any chances. Well, last year we mentioned these two teams Fox. met at the Rose Bowl. They all know about it, even the guys four from four Florida and California. Short touchdown. Six yards on that bar. Self-capacity, there's Bernard Thomas forcing in the end zone. 
California leading in the second quarter. 15 to three, California. And then this was Ricks. After he had made one good play already, made a second one for a touchdown. Kerry Colbert from Wyneme, who's now at USC. Florida tried to rally late, 21 to three, California at that point. Florida got back within 10, but could get no closer. And California won it 22 to 11. And a lot of the California players said afterwards, hey, it wasn't even that close. We had them all the way. And some exciting high a chance to visit with Bernard Thomas, who was named the uh, MVP of that game, game the defensive game he found his back in that highlight. Tonight, at 1 o'clock, Pacific Ricks is here today. Time, Remember that and shovel pass Ricks had? Rolling and throwing? He does. He reminded me of it in practice this week. <laughs> he said, wasn't that a great play? I said it was. Chris Ricks now at Florida State. Trying to earn some playing time, and Florida's going to throw. McPherson throws out of bounds. So and Jim, you know that's questionable because if you're, if you're willing to throw it on third down, you might have stopped, chose to go on second down when everything was going to be wide open. So you knew that California had to commit to the line of scrimmage. Now the ball's incomplete. That basically saves California the timeout. So they'll have a minute 32 and one timeout and one chance to pull this game. Fourth down into all away for Florida. We'll John Max still intense. He wants Sarasota the football Riverview. back. He's going to get it back. Dominic Robinson is back deep. Back deep. Dominic Robinson. Dominic Robinson back deep for California. That ball high and deep. Good punt. Robinson at the 21. Trying to make something happen for California. Robinson through a seam. Robinson to the 43 yard line. Return, the Boy, is he exciting. Every time he touches the ball, you just feel like something's going to happen. Of course, he's made his presence felt on defense. Florida State picking up a very talented athlete. He, he reminds me a little of Dion, doesn't he? Watch the flash and the high knees through the hole. You see he only has the one chin strap unbuckled. Lock. The shirt untucked. Prototype Dion, he has a long way to go to prove himself, but he is on his way. I haven't seen a, a player that pretty at this level since you, Bishop <laughs> Obama. I think I look better than him. Iron towel, the wristbands, the clean jersey. <laughs> David Corral back at quarterback, Tyler Ebell. Now look at this. You need, you need some yards, and you don't have much time, so you run with Mighty Mouse. And he picks up 11 yards across midfield into Florida territory at the 45-yard line. And now we have another penalty flag here. This is amazing. With a minute left to go in the game, the game on the line, we're going to have another unsportsmanlike penalty. Now there's Matt Clark, and I think he was involved in this. And really, for either side, you got to ask players, what are you thinking? The game is on the line at this point. And stop it. You know, strap on the helmet and go to work. We'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. Let's see what happened at the end of this play. Tyler Ebell on the handoff. Well, first of all, there's a great play called by Mark Feely. Of course, you know that they are, it's a passing situation. So they go to Ebell. He gets tackled. Out of bounds. He picks up the first down. Now let's Matt Clark, number five. Yeah. Activity. A little pushing and shoving. And Ebell saying, well, what happened? But it, yeah, but it wouldn't stop there. We're going to see what the penalty is. Personal foul Personal against foul California. Penalty. Personal foul against Florida, so they'll offset and they'll leave it right there. And Matt Clark is the guy who started the whole thing, and Ebel still doesn't know what happened. I got my 11 yards, right? You know, I, I, I like Tyler Ebel. I want him to have a good future at UCLA. He's just a nice kid, and, and I think he's proven his point today that he can play at the next level. Four touchdowns in high school. He got another one today. <laughs> Almost 4,500 yards rushing in one season. I remember, remember during the high school football season last year here in Southern California, we would say, how many did Ebel get? <laughs> and right. the numbers were three and 400 every night. <laughs> That's right. David Corral at quarterback for California. We're still trying to place this ball exactly where it should be. The California offense is lined up at the 47-yard line. David Corral stays in there. He's going to bring a first, first down. 114 left. Where's Eli at this point? He's the guy who's been able to get open. That ball was deflected. They did try to go to Ely out in the flat. Pass knocked down. 
that stops the clock with 104. All California needs is a field goal. Now, Jim David Corral is listed at 6-2, but if I'm California, I would like to see him move out of the pocket a little bit. The pocket is collapsing on him right now, and they need to come up with something of a half roll to maybe get him out and get some passing lanes to avoid those passes getting knocked down. Corral is 5 for 12, but 0 for his last four in the second half. He hasn't picked up a completion yet in the second half. Second down and 10 from the 45-yard line. That's Corral pumps. Corral still has it. Corral trying to get out, trying to find some help. Throws and has Ely. And Ely has a first down to the 32. Boy, Jim, what a throw. What a play by Corral. Kept his poise in the pocket, able to elude defenders, step up and make a strong throw to his favorite target, Charles Ely. That was just a great individual effort. The high school teammates from Pally High, Pacific Palisades in West Los Angeles. Corral, bad snap, he picks it up, spins, and he was hit as he threw, and he still gets his man, Dominic Robinson, inside the 25 to the 24. Corral's all fired up, he's bouncing around the huddle. Jim, he's pulling magic tricks out now. Bad snap, which is the worst thing for a quarterback in the shotgun because it takes your eyes off the pass over. He had to reach down, get that snap, then collect his switch and still make a throw to a strike to Dominic Robinson. So Corral, as soon as you say he was over four, he hits two big ones. Yeah, as a quarterback in the shotgun, you want that ball to hit you in the mouth. You want it coming right there so you can keep your eyes right over the top of it and see those backers and those defenders. 51 seconds. And that's Brian New, the field goal kicker for California from modern day. And, of course, he beat Loyola during the regular season. The Catholic rivalry here in Southern California, modern day and Loyola. He beat Loyola with a field goal. We hope he's thinking about that one and not the field goal he missed against De La Salle. Yeah, that's right. That's the one against De La Salle. Uh, De La winning that game by three points. That would actually drop it into a tie. So Brian New, no stranger to pressure in playing in modern day. He's been in a lot of pressure situations, a lot of pressure kicks. Look at his coach going over and, and giving him some love right now. And it was funny. We talked with John Mack about Brian New and about this California squad. We said, are these guys starting to bond? And he said, yeah, they've all decided to gang up, and they just call him kicker and toe. And they, they don't consider him a real football player. Of course, it's all done and a little bit of a grin. But, Jim, you notice that nobody else on the team is talking to the kicker at this point. They leave him alone, let him gather his wits, and let him concentrate on what he has to do. The rest of the players are leaving him alone and act like he doesn't even exist. But if he makes this kick, he'll definitely recognize it. Keep in mind that we talked about the breeze that blows in off the Palisades here in, in Santa Barbara. And so for, for watching at home, it's right to left. And you see the flags on top of the goalposts. They are favoring Brian New right now. And already they're at the 24. So essentially it's a 40-yard field goal with the wind right now. And they still have 51 seconds to pick up some extra yards. It's second down and two. You go to Ebel and get the first. Not yet. Pump fake. Pressure. Great play by Corral to get away. See if he can throw it now. He fumbles it. Ebel gets on it. Loose football. And Ebel might have got it back. And JJ Corral got out of that. I thought he was just going to throw it away. Which would have been the wise decision for Corral because he could have avoided the negative loss that they're going to take here. You avoid the loss. You keep the time on the clock. You get the football back. And Tyler Ebel battling underneath that pile to get to the loose football. He may have saved the last chance for California. For California. I'll tell you what, the defensive pressure, though, from this first floor, North Florida, is just immense. Corral, as soon as he gets back in the pocket, made it set up. The pocket is collapsing around him, and he has to make some decision. It's going to be a legal shift. See Corral pulling magic tricks out, able to elude that tackle. Don't have to have right there, Jim, where you thought he was going to throw it away. Get rid of it at that point. <laughs> But he didn't know the pressure was coming. Of course, the Tyler Ebell was right there to recover that, or else that game would have been over at that game. was over if he doesn't get that football back. So the penalty against California moves him back, and now California's going to call timeout. With 33 seconds left to play, and so Corral now has to make up for the yards that he lost because you know, now it would be a 44-yard field goal for Brian New. Oh, just a reminder, don't miss the interactive National Sports Report each and every night at 10.30 right here on Fox Sports Net. They give you all the day's scores, the highlights, the late-breaking news, and the world of sports. It's the National Sports Report each and every night at 10.30. Be sure to check your local listings. All right, JJ, third down and seven here. 
you want to move the ball. You don't want to ask for too much. No. You think about it, do you even worry about first downs at this point, or you just maybe set up Brian New and, and take your chances with a 40-yarder? Well, I think you have to go for the first down here. And the reason why, Jim, is this ball lays on the left hash. And we talked about it earlier in the game. These are NFL regulation goalposts, so they are narrow, as opposed to the high school or the college goalposts that are wider. So it's a tougher kick than just a 45-yard kick with the winners back to him. He has to be accurate. Third down and seven. Ely on the left, and Clark is in the slot on the left. They need seven. They want six points. Into the corner of the end zone. Ball is intercepted by Florida. They didn't bite, and Florida may have just wrapped this game up, J.J. California thought that Florida would bite up close. Corral laid it out, and he got burned. Yeah, Jim, and I just don't think this is a good decision by the California coaches, obviously, but mainly because it's a three-deep coverage. They're in three-deep zone. You know that the guys are going to be off. You're not going to get him to bite on this, and he throws it right into the defender. A nice concentration, a nice catch for the interception. But at this point, third and seven, you can go for the first down. They're going to be in three-deep coverage. They're going to leave the flag open for you. There's a lot of options for the California team. I don't think he goes deep in that situation. Juan Brown with the interception to win it, essentially, for Florida right now. Four turnovers for California. And Corral wishes he had that one back. The play was set up to go to Dominic Robinson, and Brown just he just gave him enough room and just backpedaled. Well, they tried to go with the slant and go, but at that point of the, you know at this point of the game, the Florida team knows that a touchdown beats them. A field goal was not going to beat them, so they were going to willing to give up the underneath stuff, try to come up and make the tackle. That time goes right into coverage for the interception. Florida goes home with their first California Bowl victory. Yeah, well, even the series at one and one. California won at 22 to 11 last year at the Rose Bowl. And Ron Brown, and the Florida teammates, got what they came for—a victory. Now all they do is take a snap, run the clock out, and take it home. Now, Jim and I was talking to some of the players before the game for Florida, and they said even though it's only been a week that this team has been together, they have really meshed and gelled as a team. Of course, there's a lot of great athletes, so you'll never get this many athletes on one team, but just the camaraderie between this Florida team and the desire to win, I think that set them over the edge today. Tyler e. Bell is a little bit disappointed, but he played himself a very good football game, and now we can start thinking about walking around the Westwood campus of UCLA, playing for Bob Toledo and the Bruins in the fall. They take the knee, and a wind the clock. Football. California not calling any time out here. And that should be enough. Yep. John Mack walks out on the field. The he surrenders. Jim Sauls and Florida, they Plus win it. 11, Florida 10, with 382 9, total 8, yards. California 7, with 301. I think we got exactly 5, what we wanted. 4, yeah, a lot Jim, of great talent. 3, Jim, this is, this is a phenomenal 1. day. We saw a ton of great players. Dominic game. Robinson, of course, for California. A.D. McPherson, probably the Florida best Dallas athlete Dallas ever to play high school in Florida. What a great day and what a tremendous amount of talent is played on this field. Florida can raise the helmets in celebration as they beat California 17 to 14. We will come back and wrap things up from Harder Stadium on campus at UC Santa Barbara on Fox Sports Net 2. Now for a year, the Florida players thought about coming back to California and earning some respect. They said they were going to get it. They said they would take it if they had to. And they will take it home, 17 to 14, as they beat California in the Cal of Florida Bowl two to even the series at one and one. Jim, the commitment, the focus of this Florida team over the week, the way they came together, and the way they played today, led by A.D. McPherson. What a tremendous effort! A.D. McPherson, 13 of 20, 248 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. He threw one to Crow Thorpe. He threw the other one to Jaworski Pollock. And now he will go on and play at Florida State University. And someday you'll say, I saw him play in high school. <laughs> and I saw it on Fox Sports. Florida beats California 17-14. to For John Jackson and Mike Lamb, I'm Jim Watson. Saying so long from Harder Stadium on the campus of UC Santa Barbara. Don't forget, for all the latest scores and highlights from the world of sports, don't miss the National Sports Report tonight at 10.30 right here on Fox Sports Net. Thanks again for watching and have a good game.